One of the big differences between machine learning engineering and NLP engineering and other types of software engineering is that it's very important to annotate data, or at the very least, be familiar with the data annotation process. Today, I'm going to talk about what data annotation is specifically for language and cover some different tools and techniques and tricks to make your annotation go as smoothly as possible in NLP for developers. So if you're doing any type of supervised learning anywhere in your NLP pipeline, and you most likely are, data annotation has played a role in your work. If you're lucky enough to have a large pre-annotated text corpus that you can use, you may not have to have done all the training annotation for yourself, but once your project is deployed, if you want to know how well it's doing in situ, you're probably going to have to annotate data at some point. Annotation just means looking at language data and adding some additional information about it, ideally in a machine readable format. So if we have this piece of language data, I'd like to order a pizza for tonight. Some ways that you might annotate this, uh, you might identify that pizza is a food item and that that piece of information is important for your system to be able to handle, or that tonight is the delivery time and you want to maintain that information and use it for something else. Or you might annotate things on a larger scale. So you might say that this whole statement is part of an intent and this person is placing an order. Let's talk about some tips and tricks to make data annotation go smoothly. One really important thing that you can do to make the life of the annotators and developers working on the project better is to keep your label simple and descriptive. So order dinner and pizza topping are pretty straightforward labels that describe what the thing you're annotating is. Things like intent1, int1 underscore ver2, or a lot of confusing acronyms, here the acronym ALOCA, make it harder to quickly apply and check the labels. In addition, you're unlikely to be annotating everything just by yourself. Usually you'll work on a team with other people who also need to agree on what the labels mean. I would recommend that you clearly define your labels in a central shared location and make sure you keep this up to date. So if the meaning of a label changes or you add a new one, make sure you change wherever you're keeping this information. If you're only working with developers on a project where you're doing annotation, in the code base might be an okay place to do that. However, as soon as some of the people who are working on the annotation aren't also using the code base, you're probably going to want to move this to a shared document that your whole team has access to. One thing that is important is checking the quality of your annotations. How do you know if the annotation was correct? One thing that can help is to have a tool to allow annotators to let everyone know if they're not super certain about an annotation. So in Raza X, for example, we have a, uh, a feature called flagging, and you can flag a, uh, an annotation or a turn for other people to come back to you later and double check. It's also helpful to have some annotators look at the same data and then compare their annotations. Um, so a measure of agreement, a lot of people will talk about inter-rater reliability. You could use Cohen's kappa or Fleisch's kappa for this, or you could just put it in a table. So here, rater 1's annotations are in the columns, and rater 2 annotations are in the rows. And what you can see is they both agree on all of the things that are labeled bot challenge, and mostly they agree on the place order, but correct order, there seems to be some confusion about where that label should be applied. If you had a result like this in your work, it might be good evidence that the correct order label could use some additional clarification or maybe should be split into separate labels uh, or possibly should be removed entirely. How is language data annotation used? So first of all, to provide training data for your system, to provide labeled examples for any sort of supervised learning that you're using and also to evaluate how well your system is working. So if you are testing a conversational assistant, for example, you'll have uh, conversations that go a specific way where you provide the annotation that you want to see for the input and then use that to check that your system is actually doing what you want it to do. What are the benefits? So a big one of having labels and annotating your data is it allows you to quantify system performance. Um, you'll be able to go through and say, hey, my system was wrong, you know, 18% of the time on the samples that we checked. It also allows you to evaluate how suitable your target is. So if you're going through and doing hand annotation, you can say, oh, our target is, say, number of turns with the assistant. But in doing our annotation, we see that the turns are the assistant not understanding and people getting frustrated. So maybe we should pick another target like successfully completing an interaction or ordering a pizza. There are a couple of drawbacks. Um, one is that it is time intensive to do hand annotation of a lot of data. Another is that writing clear annotation guidelines and making sure that your labels are uh, 
easy to understand is a skill that takes time and may take a couple rounds of refinement. Um, and finally, it can it can just be a little bit boring and a little bit repetitive. But uh, to my mind, the benefits of annotation and looking at your data and making sure that your model is doing what you think it's doing far, far outweigh the downsides. I think the biggest error with data annotation is just not doing it in the first place. I know it's not the most glamorous part of NLP development, but because current methods put so much more emphasis on the data and if the data are labeled those labels, it's really, really important that you have high quality labels and that you're sure that they're high quality and that you use that to continue to assess your system over time once it's been deployed. Another error is budgeting too little time. Data annotation takes a long time, particularly if you're applying a lot of labels. So my recommendation for figuring out how long it will take is to have a couple of people spend a half hour annotating, see how many items they each get through, and use that as a baseline to figure out how much time you should budget for annotation. A couple more resources. So uh, the CDD playbook, Strategies for Conversation Development, which um, Karen wrote, is a guide to how to use annotation in your conversational AI development process. So at Raza, we advocate a development process for conversational assistance where you have uh, your assistant shared with users, and then you look at and annotate the conversations, see what's working, see what's not working, use that to make changes to your assistant, redeploy the assistant, and then continue to work in this virtuous cycle to improve your assistant over time, and also be sure that it's doing what you think that it's doing. Another good resource, especially if you really want to get in the nitty gritty and maybe add uh, more robust linguistic features to your data, uh, is the Handbook of Linguistic Annotation. It's a little bit pricey, but it does have a lot of really good resources and goes into details about best practices for annotating things like grammatical markers. Thanks for joining me today on NLP for Developers. If I can leave you with one piece of advice or information today, it is that if you are working in NLP, you cannot get away from looking at language data. You're going to have to look at it and understand it and annotate it in order to get really good results in your projects. I hope you found this helpful and uh, it makes your annotation work a little bit easier and we'll see you next time. Bye.